Hi, I'm Patrick Lugo, also known as Plugo. I'm the creator of A Tiger's Tale, the Kung Fu graphic novel currently on Kickstarter. You can find it at kickstart.atigerstale.com. And don't forget to look for The Comics Foo Show on YouTube at The Comics Foo Show. You're watching and listening to Two Geeks Talking. Good morning, afternoon, evening, everyone. Two Geeks Talking is an entertainment industry interview show where we interview the creative people from the comic, film, TV, movie, and video game industries. Of course, I'm your host, Kurt Sasso. We are joined today by a returning guest. He was on the show last year with a wonderful comic called The Tiger's Tale. It's been a year since he's been on the show. A lot of things have happened since then. We're joined by the ever-talented Patrick Lugo Plugo, as he's known online. Too, how are you doing today? I'm doing well, despite lack of sleep, but I've grown accustomed to that. Well, you've been very busy though, and rightly so for that matter. <laughs> this is true. This is true. For those that don't know anything about yourself as a creative person, tell us who you are and what you're bringing to Two Geeks Talking this time around. Well, I'm Patrick Lugo, known as Plugo, author, illustrator, and comic creator. This year, I'm bringing two to anyone who's interested, A Tiger's Tale Volume 2, the acclaimed Kung Fu comic that won the Make More Comics grant for 2022 and was also featured in an art gallery show here in the San Francisco Bay Area. So let's talk about the gallery exhibit because that's new to me. How did that come about? completely out of the blue. Now, when I was doing children's book illustration, my first children's book came out 10 years ago now. When I did the illustration for that book, I got invited to be a part of the 25th annual children's book illustrator exhibit at the Sun Gallery. I had no idea that I would be spotlighted on one of the central walls and it was great fun. They then invited me back the following year, but I really didn't have anything finished. I just had pages from A Tiger's Tale that I had been working on, but they were generous and they allowed me to display what I had been working on. As we coordinated, I actually ended up printing out what I call Tiger's Tail One Half, <laughs> though it more, would more accurately be called, should be called One Thirty Second. It was just like a 14 page little floppy that I printed out on really nice cardstock for the gallery show. That was great. And then, you know, years later, I ultimately finished the graphic novel in 2022. Over the course of those years, the gallery had kind of shut down operations as a side effect of a certain pandemic we all got to participate in. Just last year, over the course of just at the beginning of the summer, they made an announcement that they would do their first in-person event and it would be, you know, the children's book gallery show. And so I know the curator, we're friends, Facebook friends and whatnot. So I just rose my hand and I was like, Tiger's Tale, it's finally done. They were thrilled. So they, once again, they spotlighted a Tiger's Tale, put it on the main wall at the front of the gallery. And it was a chance for me to take a lot of the new art that I had added to volume one and put it on display. It was great fun. When you finally walked through the gallery and saw yourself and your work, what was your reaction after all of this uh, issues with the pandemic that had occurred? You know, it took a little, I was, I was masked up like a ninja. It took me a while to get into the groove. My dog, my faithful companion wanted to be a part of it too. So I have some footage. One of my friends who does music videos for a living, you know, offered to come by and, and take some videography of it. So he's got this great footage of me at the gallery, but then you can hear my dog howling his lament in the background. It's glorious. So volume two is now available on Kickstarter. It's always wonderful to see a second volume come about from an amazing story as well too. What's happening this time around with A Tiger's Tale? This volume two is gonna be huge. Now, I don't know if you remember, but when I originally completed A Tiger's Tale, it was a single black and white graphic novel. But when I brought it to Kickstarter last year, I decided to break it down and focus on just a specific part of the story and color that. So so now I have this other part, which is the much larger, I consider it the Empire Strikes Back and the Return of the Jedi oh. in one piece. Because for about five minutes, I had thought about doing it as three volumes. I was really ambitious. I was thinking I'd have them all done in one year. I didn't expect a gallery show to get in the mix. So now volume two, rather than split that into two parts, because I didn't want that Han Solo frozen in carbonite, right? I wanted just one epic story and it's huge. Whereas the first volume was about 69 pages. This is starting at a hundred pages. So it's just a nice, huge story. And it goes from the top of the world out into unknown seas. It really builds this epic world that I then want to put into great peril. Just looking at some of the graphics below in your lower third nameplate, 
right here you have your beautiful watercolor style the black and white imagery that i got to see as well too on your kickstarter page was amazing and incredible as always here um, but that's what i've always loved about your work just your your blending of cultural styles whatever the scene calls for and it just adds some real depth to your work Thank you. Yes, I think that's why the gallery curators really respond to it. It's not like the comics art museum that focuses on comics art. This is a gallery that wanted to look at the art and wanted it to stand on its own merits. Part of my technique is to just devote everything. I create my artwork one panel at a time. Experienced comic creators will cringe at that thought. I really treat each panel like an illustration. Thanks to the power of digital, I combine them and build my pages digitally so that they can maximize the story impact. So how's the campaign been so far for you being a veteran of the crowdfunding circuit that you are? A veteran of one campaign, <laughs> exactly. you know, this campaign is very much about making sure it's not about beginner's luck. It's about making sure that the people who I'm bringing volume two to presenting it to, you know, they want to read the stories. You know, I invested some time and resources into having an animated book trailer created for the campaign so that it's not just about, hey, I did this thing, come support me. I want this to be something that people can just look at and say, oh, that story is cool. You know, I want to read about tigers and dragons and all sorts of mythical monsters versus martial artists. And I happened to see the trailer as well, which was beautiful. And I happened to speak with the person that created the trailer on social media. Tell us who actually created that trailer and how did that conversation come about? Oh, Vince from the Moving Comic Factory. I highly recommend you check out his work. He's really sitting right there at the edge of comics and motion comics. We are part of a few Discord servers together. We're part of, you know, various comic creating communities. While I was trying to formulate the things that I could do to make a Tiger's Tale Volume 2 special, I always had in my mind, oh, an animated sequence. <laughs> but I don't have the time to do that along with everything else you know it's important to find the people who know how to do that thing vince already has those skills and those talents so it was just such a great opportunity to work with someone who knows what they're doing rather than me trying to figure that out as well how's the conversation with the creative process then between you two? a trailer is something really gets our excitement levels high for something like this what was some visuals that struck you once you saw the final product well i just loved how vince was determined to make this 45 seconds an epic movie onto itself i gave him the synopsis and the pages so that he could read and then he wrote back to me his understanding of the story which was spot on from there we just started working together on how we can take what amounts to 190 pages worth of story and turn that into 45 seconds of mostly action and adventure and great character reveals. We would go back and forth, you know, and he would present us. He's got that director's mindset. So he was just so determined to present these big impact moments. And I just knew it was like a three act play. Every 15 seconds was going to be a cliffhanger that would last all of half a second because, you know, we kept going. And it was that mentality that allowed us to create a lot of impact in a short amount of time. The tiers are always an important factor when it comes to crowdfunding. What are some tiers that you're excited about showcasing with this campaign? Last I checked, I was at 88%. And so we're just hovering at that point, waiting for new backers to join in. So I've been surprised to see that the digital versions have been getting picked up, right? I have volume one and volume two landscape presented PDFs, right? I want to have those double page spreads seen in a widescreen format. Backers who are just being introduced to a tiger's tail for the first time have a lot of options in terms of how deeply they want to be committed. I created a novel, really basic backer tier for just $5. You can get a single comic card. Throughout my career, I learned how to do single page comics really well. The early part of Tiger's Tale was done as a serialized comic in the pages of Kung Fu Magazine. And those were usually just one page chapters. So I've got this skill for that. And so what I decided to do is take some of the small little folk tales and Kung Fu stories that I know and do these single page comics on cardstock that I could send to backers who are 
parent fully committed to the entire graphic novel, but want to be supportive. That's a really simple $5 tier. But then on the other side is the ultimate premium tier that I'm very excited about. This one I call my Unlock Your Wuxia Warrior tier, right? Along with getting a copy of volume one and two, the real value of that tier is that I'll work with that specific backer to transform them into a Kung Fu hero. Like I'll use my illustration skills and the 20 plus years of experience that I have directing photo shoots for Kung Fu masters, take my subject and turn them into a Kung Fu hero based on the martial arts style we think they will adopt and that they will choose if they want a weapon. I'll then create this original commission I'll provide gallery prints of those commissions so that those can be mailed to you with the comics. And you'll also get the digital files so that if you want to have it on a t-shirt like this one, we can make that happen. If you want it on a shower curtain, life size, we can make that happen too. It's about this amazing customized piece of art, but it's also about really building that connection with those individual artists, backers. I mean, some of them are extremely creative. You know, last year we had six Wuxia warriors. I have great reverence for all of them. I've opened up the slot for eight this year. So far, two of them have been taken up. One of them by a returning supporter who loved his work so much that he wants a fresh updated piece. So, I mean, that must mean something. Also, one of the reasons why this tier is so special to me is that one of the other backers was so inspired by the whole process of figuring out what would be his ideal martial arts style that he's taken up the martial art practice and he's been doing it every day since. As you know, that's a feat onto itself. And so, I mean, what a testament to the power of art caused one backer to go from, I want to look like that to to, I want to become that. What style it was that he or she decided to choose? He has devoted himself specifically to the Shaolin Yi Chin Cheng, which you can see it right there. This little sequence right here that you've put, that's a specific martial arts method that he decided to devote himself to. It's a legendary, it's one of the first foundational uh, martial art routines. Right, it was originally formulated to make the monks of Shaolin Temple, who at the time were kind of sickly and malnourished. It was that method that turned them into the martial warriors we all think about today. What a testament to the power of art, you know, comic art and martial arts. And this is why I enjoy talking with you because I get a history lesson of a martial arts that I've never experienced right here and now, and this is great. You, you can't shut me up about this stuff. <laughs> I would never dare dream of stopping you. You've taken this a step further. This is something we talked about last year that you were kind of hinting at after after the show ended. You decided to put together the Comics Foo show. For those that don't know anything about that, please tell us all about it because it's an incredible series. It's an incredible show. And for those that have not even subscribed to the channel yet on YouTube, they should be. Tell us what that show is all about. Kurt, coming from you, that's the highest praise. <laughs> the Comics Fu Show stands at the crossroads of comics, Kung Fu, and all sorts of pop culture. There are martial artists who have devoted their lives to Kung Fu, but many of them were initially inspired by those old master of Kung Fu comics from Marvel back in the 70s and early 80s. Like most geeks, they've just decided to specialize in martial arts as their geekdom of choice. They're also comic book geeks. They are also video game geeks. They are also movie geeks. They're just nerds that like to fight. So our show is based on myself and my co-host, Curtis Fujita, who's also a Kung Fu instructor, also a comic artist. He's worked for Malibu Comics back in the day. You know, we both have this great love for comics. We both have this wellspring of martial arts info that has been handed down to us. Our show is really about finding those connections. It's really easy to think about the fight choreography in a movie like Shang-Chi and The Legend of the Ten Rings. Or you can imagine the hidden martial arts philosophy within Avatar The Last Airbender. I don't know if you know, but every one of those bending techniques is based on a specific martial art. We've had the privilege of speaking to that Kung Fu master who set up Avatar The Last Airbender. Wow. Another amazing martial artist that we had the good fortune of speaking to, Brad Draber, the founder of Powerhouse Animation, who's done the recent He-Man reboots along with a lot of the other action-packed cartoons that we love. But he is a devoted martial artist and you could see that devotion in the work that he produces once you know that 
there's that connection. You can't not see it. And so that's the thing. The Comics Fu Show has been so much about, you know, letting martial artists geek out on the things that they may not normally have a chance to talk to, letting other creatives, comic book artists, animators, talk about the martial arts that have been such a significant part of their life, but they never have a chance to talk about. So they get to talk about those things with us and we're equally able to talk about the martial arts or about the cartoons or the comics. I do it because it's so much fun for me. Evidently, it's fun for a lot of other people as well. And I happened to pop in a couple of days ago as of this recording and ask a basic question. Top three martial arts films for someone that isn't in martial arts and boom answered right away i didn't expect it uh, that quickly it was incredible to see it gave me some ideas to look back at some old films that i hadn't seen in a while as well too so i really appreciated the you guys taking the time to answer that question oh yeah exactly and then we took a tangent and got all deep and philosophical exploring the ancient history of that yin yang symbol we all associate with martial arts you know this crazy blend of the pop culture novelties, what's happening in the moment, what's the fun action cartoon, or what's the cool John Wick style fight scene that we've just watched. We can balance that out with some deep conversations about some of these ancient practices and how they have survived for thousands of years and why, why they're still valued. It's also educational. It's also entertaining and providing something that I think a lot of people think they know about. But when you really dive into the topics themselves, the geek culture or the artistic side of the comic or the art or the animation. But when you dive into the martial arts side of things as well, there are so many martial arts that have probably blended into more modern styles these days. But if you look at the roots of and the history of them, you can really appreciate it even more. So. Oh yeah, I mean, one of the key tenets of martial arts and Kung Fu in particular is the reverence for the ancestors and the acknowledgement that what we have now would not be present if it wasn't for those that came before us. And so along those same lines, these projects that I'm engaged in, the Comics Fu Show and A Tiger's Tale, it's about taking that same ancient knowledge, that ancient wisdom, consolidating it and distilling it into a way that can be absorbed by young readers and young viewers, people who may have gotten a surface glimpse of these things, may not have realized that there's uh, deeper levels to it. These applications go beyond just protecting yourself in a back alley. The thing that I like to say is that Kung Fu doesn't just mean fighting, right? Kung Fu is what you do well. And so you can have good Kung Fu in cooking. You can have good Kung Fu in brewing a good pot of tea. I mean, you could have good Kung Fu in running an interview show. I'm speaking of you, Kurt. <laughs> I just try to make it through one interview at a time. That's all I do, Patrick. Well, see, but that's exactly, that's exactly the Kung Fu master mentality. Running a show is difficult because you're not only interviewing people, but you're also trying to get engagement from the community. How are you trying to get engagement from your community with such a wonderful show? It's trying to stump the Kung Fu master. Oh. And there's a little inside joke there for people who have like a deep knowledge of Kung Fu and the origins of Kung Fu, but I'll save that for another time. Our goal is that we have this network of Kung Fu masters who all love to talk about their specialty as well as pop culture. And then we also have comic creators who are martial artists or are interested in that subject. But what we're trying to do to blend the two is to do something that I've now started calling Stump the Kung Fu Master, although we originally pitched it as Ask the Kung Fu Master. Mm -hmm. And the idea is that we want comic creators and other creatives who want to like punch up their action scenes and want to have a better grasp on how to deliver good fight choreography to join us, right? And to ask these Kung Fu Masters and to challenge them with their knowledge, you know, challenge them with questions about specific Kung Fu styles or specific historical or philosophical topics, or even, you know, what's your favorite Kung Fu movie question you asked, or what's your favorite fight scene? I want this to be fun, but I want it to be useful to people. And so I think these days, martial arts is very popular, especially in comics. And so I think that there are comic artists out there who might be challenged with a specific sequence and might be wondering, how does one defend against the spear when they only have a dagger in their hand, you know? Or what martial arts style would Batman really practice? Would it be ninjutsu? 
Would it be Shaolin Kung Fu? You know, those are just the questions that I'm thinking of. I want as many people as possible to come in and really engage with these Kung Fu masters, you know, let them share their knowledge. It could be genuine advice about their workout and whether or not there's value in learning martial arts from YouTube. Or it could be something more specific, like who's a better martial artist, you know, Iron Fist or Richard Dragon. I'm trying to think, because you, you brought up Batman and I thought I read something somewhere and I'm sure someone's going to correct me on this that if he mastered over a hundred martial arts or something like that in 27 or so years of being a crime fighter what martial arts didn't he master I know right Batman was the first mixed martial artist in history but can you imagine going into the octagon wearing a cape that's brave I mean that would be the first thing that people would pull if it wasn't you know yeah, exactly. Right. We, we all saw those results yeah. in uh, The Incredibles by Pixar. Yep. I think that's where there are Kung Fu practitioners who are so geeky that they'll argue these things. I've had these arguments and debates with other martial artists who would be the better fighter. Would, you know, would Batman really need to learn specifically ninjutsu or would he be able to do enough knowing Shaolin Kung Fu mm -hmm. or black tiger llama pie tibetan kung fu i think he might be into that <laughs> well, i think he visited tibet once or twice in his lifetime i'm sure at least for what i've seen <laughs> yeah yeah i think i think i recall a few issues specifically about that and then the black tiger that's pretty badass you know it is. it's true you know patrick it, there's so much more we could talk about but we are unfortunately short on time so i'm gonna have to say that ends this particular episode of two geeks talking Kurt, thanks so much for making this little sliver of time available. I know you're a guy who's constantly, you know, up to something. And so I appreciate these moments that we can just chit chat and, and geek out. And I hope to see you sometime soon on the Comics Foo Show, either in the chat or live, you know, so that we can really get into the details of what grappling style would the thing best be suited for. As long as he doesn't break his coffee pot, I think he'll be fine. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you're you're a wealth of knowledge and you have a wonderful aura about you as well as you know you're entertaining educational and don't worry i'll be a guest or i'll be lurking in your chat whatever you whatever the case might be however our schedules collide we will meet each other in some way shape or form you know the the kung fu willing indeed you know the door is always open kurt uh, same for you here as well too Excellent. Well, this was great. I have to thank you and, uh, again for, for this time. Message to everyone else, come join us. Well, and this is a great way, it's a great segue into how can we support you? Where can we find you? Of course, where is the Kickstarter campaign? And of course, the Comics Foo show itself. Well, right now we're hosting the Comics Foo show live streams on the Kickstarter page that A Tiger's Tale Volume 2 is crowdfunding on and so the the website for that would be kickstart.atigerstail.com atigerstail.com has a lot of resources free comics and essays a lot of educational material but kickstart.atigerstail.com will help get volume two printed and in people's hands well, like I said, that ends this particular episode of Two Geeks Talk. You can, of course, find this interview and a thousand plus others on our website, tgtmedia.com or twogeekstalking.com. It's the word two, not the number two. Of course, our YouTube channel is a lot more updated than our website, which is youtube.com forward slash C forward slash tgtmedia. And the podcast is back after 12 years. So you're going yeah. to hear Patrick in podcast form on twogeekstalking.podbean.com where you can find him and this interview and maybe his first interview as well on two geeks talking on your favorite streaming service so whatever you listen to on spotify or whatever the case may be and as i say every week everyone has a story to tell it's up to me to help bring that out thanks for listening watching on two geeks talking